Thirty. Yes, Everyone, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, uh, as we all know, in mathematics study, we will be going to uh, study about how youngsters can be uh, humble. We have uh, Julius Uncle with us. I request Brother uh, Deepak John to lead us in the opening prayer. Uh, let's pray. That what you are doing in Virupura. We also, Lord, thank you and praise you for the research that has been completed in Tamil Nadu. Lord, it is a is a big must that uh, you have done this in the uncle. Do you have uncle? Uh. Hi, heavenly, hi, heavenly loving Father. Thank you for this wonderful day you have given us. Thank you for gathering us all together in your name, Lord. Thank you for this day. Yes, Lord, we have come to listen to your words. Yes, Lord, thank you for this thematic study. Help us to uh, listen to it and keep it in our heart and follow it. Not only just hear it and let it go, we must follow it. And, and yes, Lord, we have to be an example to others. Help us to follow it. Help us to hear the words properly. And we mustn't be distracted or we mustn't let any distraction, distraction attack us, Lord. The same way, there mustn't be any issues with the network and uh, mobile connection, mobile pro issues. There mustn't be any technical issues, Lord. Help us to uh, listen, help us to hear the words properly and meditate and follow it, Lord. The same way, the, uh, thank you for the person who's going to speak it. You speak through him, Lord. I completely send everyone at your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, now uh, we have Sister Moriam to lead us in worship. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible, Sister? Yes, Nika. Okay. Good evening, once again. Um, I praise God for giving me this wonderful opportunity in today's uh, <coughs> Bible study, the Kibbutz study. <coughs> Let's come together in one mind and praise Allah. So we'll sing one song. When upon that below, you are tempestuous. <clears throat> I'll sing and you can join. When upon life's pillows you are tempestos, when you are discouraged, thinking all it is lost, come to many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Come to your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Are you ever burdened with the Lord again? Does the cross seem heavy to our God today? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. When you look at others with their lands and do, think that Christ is to miss you, it's well unto. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven, no, your own on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, 
so much akka uh, i hand over the session to julius uncle now is my voice clear are you able to hear me yes okay. uncle yes uncle yes uncle okay okay right mm -hmm. slide can you see yes uncle Uh, Nancy, Uncle? can you read First Peter chapter five verses one to seven? Yes, Uncle. One minute. Mm. All of you can take the Bible, First Peter chapter five verses one to seven, and she will read. <clears throat> Shall I, Uncle? Yeah, read, Ma. Bible reading is taken from First Peter chapter five verse one to seven. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing, <clears throat> not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those interested to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves before humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Here ends the reading. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Now the topic given is how will it be possible for young people to be humble? Okay, you are given the verse First Peter 5.5, 5, uh, but we cannot be studying one verse out of context. So we have to take, uh, in fact, the whole chapter. So I have taken just seven verse like. Okay, now look at the beginning of chapter 5. 
what is peter is telling peter is telling the leaders pastors okay they have to do their job faithfully <clears throat> they go to do their job faithfully and various other things he is giving peter then is standing over to young people the whole church in fact uh, whole church now elders pastors he has addressed what they should do he has told now he is coming to the congregation and he is concentrating on the young people likewise you younger people submit yourself to your elders you know he want the young people to submit the humility part of that we will see and do you notice the main thing he tells is in this passage it's that we are to be clothed with humility that is the main thing peter is talking about that's what we are to be wearing the attire when we come to the fellowship to the church this we have to learn between husband and wife and then to the fellowship and then to the you know um, uh, whole society unless we practice that we will find it difficult in other words we are to be clothed with humility in the household of faith humility is the proper attire for fellowship life okay so when we come together when we come together we have to notice humility in every one of our life not pride not trying to do things that two youngsters have got you know every reason uh, not to obey the elderly people if i say something nancy can tell uncle you are too old you won't understand you know this is possible because you know certain things the trend and uh, fast in fact so i say for example my smartphone if i have problem i i, I cannot do how to do i may not know but my grandson will quickly do that i ask him they how did you do he will say dada don't worry don't worry here i am you know quite often this can happen you know but god wants young people to be humble willing to listen to the elderly people okay now what exactly do we mean by humility it is not humiliation humiliation you know what it is you know you uh, humiliate somebody their dignity or make them less in everyone when the whole group is they are you try to put down somebody that is humiliating so humility is not humiliation but to practice humility is different it is something you know we have to do ourselves to humble ourselves in the sight of others okay we are not trying to elevate ourselves in public i am above i know better i can do better no 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 willing to accept the position of service towards one another you know so that is what humility is about the greatest picture of humility is seen in jesus christ you know during the last supper you know he was putting the uh, you know uh, apron the dress and started washing the legs peter said no how can you wash you are <clears throat> the king of kings and the lord of lord you cannot wash then jesus said if i do not wash you have no you have no place here you know then he says okay you wash completely <laughs> that is how the discussion was going on all that jesus did it was a surprise for the disciple they never expected he will tighten the rope the apron and come and start washing the legs of the people disciples okay now that is humility he is the model 
for everything love he is the model humility he is the model it's what each of us to be clothed with towards one another and it's particularly important during this time you know when there is persecution hostility you know we have to show humility they are looking at us not we may have the right to preach the gospel we have the right to follow any religion but during persecution time they will be twisting this and that so many things can happen but we don't fight we we don't take a knife and fight with them like peter you know peter was cutting the ear of a soldier you know jesus said put it out no you know we have to be humble the world is watching us it is watching how we respond to the pressure when we are pressurized persecuted when they see us they need to see the kind of humility that has to be exhibited in us that's one way you know that they know we belong to christ we belong to christ so humility you know is that there we have to have every one of us and that exhibits christ that is humility jesus christ is the model the how then is possible for youngsters to become humble okay the fifth verse you know that is the verse you had given taking a humble position towards one another we don't say okay i know i i have i am i have i have studied more i have done this <clears throat> you know if it looks like that in uesi professor enak was a professor and we go as a student he doesn't even call by name he will say brother julius i will say why you call me brother julius you call by your name no you know he takes a very humble position he will be taking bible study to the students he will be entertaining you know that is the humility taking a humble position towards one another for the young people to understand that peter wants all younger people to show due respect and regard to all those who are <clears throat> older and more matured in faith so one way that we are to be clothed in humility is by taking humble position towards each other peter writes yes all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed clothed with humility for god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble okay when peter said this probably he had the image of the lord jesus christ from the table of the last supper wrapping himself with a garment apron okay that is what the picture he had in the mind so we have to humble ourselves if i want to be the leader i should be serving everyone and it's essential that we be clothed in humility towards one another peter is quoting from proverb 334 surely he scorns the scornful but gives uh, to the gives uh, giving grace to the humble the same verse is also quoted by james later in his letter without such a spirit of humility we would fight and devour each other in god's house uh, nancy can you read james chapter 4 you know connecting with peter james 4 verses 6 to 10 <clears throat> look at that am i audible uncle yeah yeah okay ma but he gives us more grace that is why scripture says god opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble submit yourself then to god resist the devil and he will flee from you 
come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Thank you. Look at that. It is not only Peter. Everyone writes about that because they have learned, you know, first hand on job training was given for the disciples. They could see what Jesus was doing, how humble he was. He did not revolt. He did not react when they were throwing stones. They were, you know, a spear was used and they were hitting on his head with a, a crown of thorn. He never reacted. All that what he said, Lord, they don't know what they do. Forgive them. Forgive them. That exactly Stephen, the first martyr also did. He was praying for them. My friends, we have to take a humble position towards one another. Whether you are young or old, age is not the criteria. He has first told to the old people, leaders, pastors, whoever it may be. And Peter comes to all others, the whole congregation, especially the young people. Okay, God resists the proud. That's what we were reading. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And Nancy has read that. So let's be clothed in humility in God's house by making sure that we are clothed with humility towards each other. Let's come to fellowship or church tied on the apron of humble service towards one another. This is what Jesus did. Okay, first one. Okay, how then is possible for young become, to become humble? Taking a humble position towards one another. Whoever they may be, be humble and God will lift you up. Secondly, submitting yourself to the sovereign will of God. Verse 6. Verse 6. Submit yourself to the sovereign will of God. You know that. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. That in due time he will exalt you. That is the sixth verse. That's what Peter means when he says. Humble yourself. And he will lift you up in due course. It's like the law of gravity. In two direction. What goes up must come down. Okay. And what goes down becomes lifted up. When we humble ourselves under God's mighty hand, we make it easier for him to lift us up with other hand. You know, the law of gravity, somebody said, I will disprove. Why? If I jump, I have to come down, I will go up. What will happen? Somebody climbed the second floor. You look at that. I will disprove the theory, the law of gravity. So he jumped. What happened? He broke his leg. He had to come down only. That's the law of gravity. You know, what goes up must come down. What goes up must come down. Peter says that God exalts us in due time. The people of God were for a season suffering persecution. You know that. They were all persecuted. Difficulty because of the persecution. In fact, they had to go to Samaria. You know, otherwise everything was in Jerusalem. You know, but God has a plan. How to spread out the gospel to the Gentiles, to the other people. That is how persecution comes. In due, you know, in due time, he has a plan. It was as if God saw in permission. They were being permitted to undergo hardship. Trusting God to exalt them later. They had to go through. God knows what we need. And we can humble ourselves under his will. And trust him to exalt in due course. We are going through difficult time. Tough time. Problem. Discouragement. Trust the Lord. The sovereign will. When you humble yourself and go to him, when we submit, 
God will exalt in appropriate time. Our Father knows what we need in order to be refined in our faith. Joseph had to go through difficult time. He never grumbled. But God will exalt. You look at that, how he exalted Joseph. You know, he was a slave, he was in the prison. You know, even Potipa's wife was, uh, you know, blaming him unnecessarily. All that all happened. But in due course, he was humble, quiet. Even in the prison, he was uh, giving the meaning of the dream. But still, that man, once he went to the palace, he forgot him about Joseph. But God, in his time. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of the threats of the people and the trouble. You know? You have nothing to worry about that. God is with you. God is with you. You know, but sanctity, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope you have. You know, we should be able to, you know, give a response clearly. Why you do that? Why you don't do certain thing? You must know that. We have to submit to the sovereign will of God. I why this is happening to me. I don't want to do that. I cannot do this. Why I am a believer? This, that and all. Right. But you do not know. God says, I know. I have a plan for you. Plan for good. Plan for good. I have known you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. I have chosen you. That's what God says. You remember that. You have to submit to the sovereign will of God. We may not understand everything. Even now we don't understand everything. But we must submit to the will of God. So yet another way that we are to be clothed with humility is by forsaking the whole idea of Exalting ourselves. Instead, we are to humble ourselves in the mighty hand of God. When he exalts someone, they are really exalted. Don't worry about that. But due time. I am a child of God. I am following him. Why this trouble to me? Why this problem to me? Why, why? You know, God will exalt in due time. Nothing to worry about. Don't worry about. Quite often I have seen in my own department, people will be asking why you are going through trouble. You are a man of integrity. You are always smiling. You don't react to the bosses. But still, why troubles for you? Had to go through. The time had to come. Time had to come. Now Peter gives us one more way that we are to be clothed with the, the household of God. And as first, it doesn't seem to be a command about humility, but it truly is. It is that we display humility by nature. It is not, you know, a command like it should become our nature, second nature. That is our lifestyle that has to become. You know, reading about a, a man of God, who completed his, uh, you know, honors, you know, DD, doctorate in theology. When he completed, he was asked to speak in the chapel of the seminary. So he thought, I am going to speak mightily. Uh, so he was so happy. He went to the pulpit with a sense of self-importance and read the passage he was going to preach from. You know, Normally, not allowed. But you know, there are a lot of professors, this, that and all. But he was given an opportunity, he became proud. Then when he read the passage, he completely forgot his sermon, what he wanted to speak. 
So second time he is reading the scripture, but nothing was coming to his mind. That time also he did it, you know, but his mind was blank. So with a great embarrassment, he told everyone, I am sorry, I can't speak to you this morning. Down he went, got down from the pulpit with a bowed head and a broken step. When the service was over, an old leader in the church came to him and said, Pastor, if you had gone up the way you came down, you might have come down the way you went up. You went with proud and came down with shame. Had you gone with humility, you would have come down, you know, as a mighty man. That is what it happens. So we have to submit to the sovereign will of God because we do not know what God wants to do to us. You mean to say Joseph knows that he would become, you know, the prime minister of the country. You must know that. Thirdly, casting our every care upon the Lord who cares for us. The seventh verse says, cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares about you. So third thing the young people have to be doing, you know, you throw all your care, concern on him because he is caring for us. Don't carry. Don't feel heavy. You don't need to do. He is ready to carry on our behalf. He urges us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God because he cares for us. He loves us. The word that Peter uses, your care can also be translated anxieties, anxious thoughts. It is the thing we worry about. So many anxieties we have. How long this corona will continue? How long we will be in the Zoom call? When will we meet the children, our grandchildren? They call up small children. Tata, we want to go to school. We want to go to, why are you having the Zoom? No, no, no. We want to play with our friends. You know, anxious thoughts. It is the things we worry about. When, how it will happen. And we might think that it is more humble. Do not care or worry about things at all. To have an attitude of complete unconcern about ourselves or our needs. You have nothing to worry. If our loving Heavenly Father is there caring every issues of ours. He cares for us. You know, if we are truly being humble, then we will in true humility of spirit. You know, God to be what he promised to be for us. We'll ask. We will look upon every trial, every cause of anxious concern as a gift from him that allows us to become like him. You know, the whole purpose of Christian living is to become like him. And if, you know, if something comes in our life, difficult situation, if that makes us to become like him, we must accept it. We should not worry. We should. You would know that uh, Romans 8.28. Everyone knows that. Everything work together for good to them that love God. Can everything work together for good? Is it possible? I lost my mother when I was 11 years old. Was it for my good? Everything worked together for good. We don't understand. But ultimately, when I accepted the Lord, I realized, yes, because of her death, I was pushed to the corner, going through aggressive depression. And that ultimately led me to Christ. You know, everything worked together for good. To them that love God. Why? Why it can be good? A death? Sickness, losing the job, how can that be good? Because all these things make us to become like the Son of God. 
that we may become like him. We can become like him. We may be transformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. That is 29th verse. That is why as you are studying hermeneutics, you cannot read a verse or, you know, one word and, you know, out of context, you cannot study. You read how it beautifully explained that. When you read that, everything worked together for good. We won't understand. How can that work good? The death and the loss of job, this, that and all. But the next word says, you know, we be transformed to the image of his son. If the death in the family can transform me to the image of Jesus Christ, that is what I want. I am willing to go through difficult situations. You go and read Hebrew chapter 11 and 12. Look at that. Everybody did not end up in the worldly success. But God has a plan. All that they have learned cast our every care upon the Lord because he loves us so much. The word that Peter uses, casting, is an interesting one. It basically means to throw something on something else. Jesus says, you throw on me. Here I am. I care for you. I am willing to carry your load. When you want to carry and stumble and break your neck. It was used in the Bible when we are told that the disciples threw their own clothes to the donkey for the Lord to ride in the Jerusalem. You know, Palm Sunday. What a picture that is. They were removing and throwing. You know, it is to give honor to God. God invites us to bring our concern to him and throw them on him as if that's where they belong to. And the way Peter says, this doesn't simply mean that we throw our cares on our father in a general sort of once for all kind of way. But they bring each one to him and cast them upon him every time. You know, problems will come. It is not once comes and goes off like it may come. Maybe a different problem may come. But we must learn to throw on him because he cares for us. He is not getting offended. Why are you putting your uh, problem on me? No. He allows us to go through. It is like a silversmith. A silversmith, he will be keeping an eye when the gold is put on the, you know, fire. And someone asked, you know, how long you will be there? I don't take off my, you know, my eyes. I always looking into that. If I take it early, it is no use. If we take it late, it will melt. Then how do you know it's the right time to take? When I see, I should be able to see my reflection. I should be able to see my face like a mirror on the gold. That's the time that exactly God wants every believer, every youngster to become like him. To become like him. To be transformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. How do we do that then? Paul wrote in Philippians 4th chapter, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. We throw each anxious thought upon him through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. We thanks God. We don't sit and cry, cry, cry. Yeah, we may cry in prayer, but we thanks God because God knows. We say, Father, I have a concern. Here it is. I give to you. I ask that you do what is needed. It's off from me. And I thank you in advance for your unending love and care for me. And when we do that, we are being truly humble. We are truly humble. 
we are not anxious worried so youngsters <clears throat> that's how we come properly dressed in the household of god we come close with humility when it comes to each other we make sure that we tie on the humble apron of service towards one another as jesus did when it comes to god we make sure that we humble ourselves under his mighty hand and when it comes to the trials of life we humble ourselves by bringing each and every concern where it should go upon the loving care of our heavenly father can we do that may god help us to be properly dressed in humility in his household of faith you know that is what god's desire we may be properly dressed in humility when we come together as a fellowship as a church as a community of god's people that is what god wants everywhere to be humble so that he can exalt that is what he is writing you know the fifth verse you know likewise you that are younger be subject to the elders clothe yourself all of you with humility towards one another for god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble okay over to you see anybody has any any clarification you want or any question practical application part of that you can maybe this is my situation what should i do uh, you can anybody has any question any clarification you want i believe you want to add something probably thank you anand uh, yeah, that's right let uh, let them think of questions i just want to add one more dimension anand said very clearly jesus is our model and uh, in the household of god's people we need to learn of course in our culture it is changing those days it was like that i remember i cannot sit in the chair when my father is uh, coming to the room <laughs> because i have to give the chair to him but now i cannot expect from my grandson or from my son <laughs> so it is very practical that uh, things are changing but uh, in the household in the church in the fellowship we need to constantly keep jesus as our model i just wanted to add one more dimension that we have great role models before us uh, in the bible and now in the history uh, that's what uh, uh, my strong conviction uh, right from a young uh, spiritual life i was so much motivated by uh, great people i just started uh, uh, just noting down as something like a stories uh, which has uh, really affected me uh, please allow me to share uh, anan uh, one or two things let me start with uh, julius anan uh, uh, he is in a very high position as a very young uh, staff worker i joined in national usa in 88 uh, september then 89 january i think 27th or 28th no 29th i went to isaac and uh, i know that uh, julius anan is going to uh, host me i am going to be there so i expected one eu student or some young graduate will come and pick me up i went there no mobile phones nothing <laughs> only thing is billy is coming <clears throat> i went there and i was waiting in the uh, platform i couldn't meet that's a daytime and i have me i don't you might have forgotten that <laughs> you came to the station and as you couldn't meet me on time you went to the uh, railway office and announced in the <laughs> microphone one mr billy from chennai has come uh, your friend mr julius is waiting for you <laughs> 
my god uh, how come i can expect a microphone call like that my name is mentioned there and then i was just coming into the entrance and there i met julius anand i was humble like anything he doesn't need to come and uh, he came before that another president of usa mr hs pondraj great man and uh, uh, he was a principal of a, a engineering college and that time he had his me from america those days i'm talking about 1960s me a very, very maybe 50s or 60s but when i went there as an ordinary young tamil nadu staff worker he stood up from his chair and came to me to uh, leave me from the room my god i cannot think of being proud when i have such great role models when i think of it i'm i have to cry because such a way my great people not with my gray hair when they come and do it now i can understand i'm an ordinary staff worker very simple fellow and they respected me my dear young friends we have great great role models in your home in your church and in your fellowship please please make note of it one more thought with that i finish you are you can ask question sorry i am taking time 2004 in vijayawada we had a national uh, golden jubilee conference of usa there was one dr vinay samuel from hyderabad he was preaching uh, and i was part of the graduates group and one of the points he mentioned in john start we cannot see the humility we can feel the humility my god john start world famous evangelical leader we cannot see the humility we can feel the humility in him the whole golden jubilee conference this one thought is enough for me i don't need to show humility people should feel humility my brothers and sisters i know we can preach and we are all uh, old people we have crossed our age but we want to tell you as young people please if you are humble definitely god will honor you god will bless you there is no doubt about it i fully vouch uh, what julisan was telling over to nancy if you have any questions please ask so that julisan can answer you i think practical questions if anything please do that because you know because this humility i have to expound the word of god normally i was taking in practical things but this i wanted to explain and most of the things you know those days when we get into the bus and we are sitting when we see some elderly people we immediately get up and today we don't get up young people because you will be immediately switching over to your smartphone and to sit and do that it is convenient for you like but you just reflect and as children of god you know we go to reflect him through our humility they have to see what is this normally young people don't get up how come you are getting up you know uh, that should show that we belong to him Um, thank you so much uncle uh, i have a question mm. uh, uh, to take a, for an example uh, there is a family meeting and one person from the same family humiliates uh, the other member and uh, that person is not ready to give up who is hum- who is uh, humiliating the other mm. and uh, the counterpart's uh, family member is uh, trying to uh defend his uh, parent or someone but uh, he is also very conscious that he should not hurt the other so in that case uh, is it better for him to leave the room just to uh, let go the situation or is it good for him to stand by his parent and talk for his parent side you know uh, uh, who had humiliated the parents were humiliated huh? yes uncle Mm-hmm. yeah yeah um you know somebody is humiliating um your parents what is your response is that yes. 
Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, that's the question. Like, yeah, that's a good. In fact, uh, you know, now when in front of immediately, if you are um, reacting, it will end up in a conflict. So, you know, you will have to handle it very carefully. Um, in the sense, you know, we're looking not immediately like that uh, things could, when things are cooled down to explain you know that will hurt why why don't you avoid that or why don't you say sorry like that and things like that you can do that if the person is adamant no no i was right and things like that and all uh, then you know you can look at somebody else in the family who is elder who can try to convince him but otherwise if we are start arguing they are uh, it is very difficult it is very difficult you know even in that place if uh, he acts as if he has accepted it is like this operation successful but baby died and he may you know may not to be in touch with you at all like that it can also happen we, we cannot lose like that yeah, Billy, you can add, Billy. Yes, Nancy, it is a very challenging question. <laughs> uh, as a married man, I can think of little more extras. If my wife is humiliated, <laughs> uh, as a husband, I cannot simply stand there and quiet. Yeah. Naturally, if I am humiliated, my wife cannot uh, simply laugh at that uh, situation. And naturally, they'll be reacting. It's very natural. But as Anand said, we have to really pray. And then uh, God alone can give us wisdom to react in the right way. If you're not going to react, you're not a human being because you don't respect your parents, you don't respect your spouse. So we have to be thoughtful about it. But at the same time, uh, our strong reactions will uh, lead us in uh, unnecessary arguments only. So we need to be very thoughtful, prayerful, but uh, we need to react. There's no doubt about it because you love your parents yeah. and we love our spouse and children, even for that matter of children, we have to be thoughtful. But Thank you me. cannot keep quiet also mm -hmm. without doing anything. You should make an attempt in the appropriate time with humility, uh, trying to, um, you know, convince and uh, make him to realize that that part you should make an attempt because the cello you he is like that only and wash off your hands no you must definitely help him um, uh, to come out of such character mm -hmm. yeah. thank and you then i have one small question to you uh, when elderly people uh, are not respecting your humility you are a young man in the office, in the church, and uh, they just laugh at you. And then they are putting you uh, like, they, they're not appreciating your humility. In a situation like that, how to react in the office setup or in the church setup? Yeah. You know, if they put you down, you have to be simply quiet only. You know, you cannot react and uh, you know, they will find, you know, in the day-to-day -day experience and things like that, whether you are humble or not. And quite often, they will try to put others down. The office situation, yes, because they want to elevate themselves. So they may try to put you down in front of others and that can happen. But we shouldn't react immediately there. Maybe, you know, I have to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Why oh, did you do that by this thing, that thing like that and all? I have gone even to my boss, commissioner. I have told him what you are doing is wrong. You know, um, in fact, once um, my boss, he was, uh, you know, having the paperweight on the table. He was rotating. He wanted to throw on me. Who are you? You are my subordinate. Who are you to advise me? I told him, sir, I have taken it seriously. Yes, I am your subordinate. I need not advise you. But 
for your good i felt that i should communicate to you and uh, he he said get out i left the place but after a week he called me he called me julius thank you thank you for uh, you know alerting me had you not you know warned me and communicated that i would have been in cbi net i would have been a victim today you know he was very thankful so we you know pleasantly we have to be doing that with all humility no doubt about it thank you uncle okay uh, thank you everyone for joining now i request uh, joshua anna to lead us in the closing prayer <clears throat> let us pray Our dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful message that we heard from Julius, our Lord. We thank you for the way uh, you have. He has blessed each one of our hearts, Lord. The passion and the dedication that he has for you, Lord, which is so contagious, Lord. I pray that you would give us the grace, Lord, to continue to live for you, Lord. I pray that whatever challenges that we might face or facing uh, every day, Lord, we thank you because you're the God, you who have begun a good work in each one of our lives, Lord. you will continue to help us lord once again we thank you for this wonderful evening evening message lord i pray that you would bless each one of us lord and continue to help us to live for you in jesus name amen 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 yeah thank you so much anna thank you everyone for joining thank you uncle for the wonderful session uh hoping to see you all on thursday